आपस कृष्ण कनिष्ठ रास लीला ब्रह्मास्वर भाग गाउसो केशी दायित्व वॉज किल्ड एंड देन नारद मेट विथ कृष्ण ओ कृष्ण यू आर ऑलवेज इंगेज इन द लव एंड अफेक्शन ऑफ प्रेजेंट दिस इज नेवर एंड बट वॉट अबाउट ऑल द डिवोटीज विच आर डाइंग फॉर यू मल्ली फॉर यू Vasudev and Devkis are in jail, and Kans is what doing? Harassing so much. Harassing so much. You will have to say. Also, you should know. I have come to remind you that Pandava is in very distress, suffering so much. You will have to go and kill the demon and. Said then. Also, there are so many demons not yet killed, and thus you should kill them and take the burden of earth. For that you have come. You are supreme Lord. You have forgotten all in bridge praying. You are. Independent, but only I can remember. Remind you. And then he took his dinner and went away. Then a crew was sent to Braja. Kans realized, I cannot kill Krishna. If he is in prison, if anyhow I can can call him with brother Ram in our fold, then easily by the help of so many demons here we can kill. Very easy. I sent Putna ten thousand elephants power. But he never came to say what happened. Domasur, Agasur, Bakasur, all I sent them, Venkasur. But anyone did not come, returned back to me. What happened? So we should send anyone who is very near and dear to them, and we should call. Krishna and Baldev by three. If death comes, then you can take a very poisonous snake in your snake as a garden, and he will bite and you will die. So, dinas kale viparitam, viparit buddhi. At the time when one is about to die, then his intelligence becomes opposite. Opposite. No, you should have a phone. <coughs> Again, Shri Guru is explaining that when a person is about to die, at that time their intelligence becomes reversed, and they always think in the opposite way to what is actually true. We call them very poisonous two snakes. Who has it? Oh, one was cobra black, and one was white cobra. And he called. But anyhow, we should kill Krishna. And then Akru, very trickily, he told to Baldev that your real father is. But they will do it. You should go and save other wise consies, killing them with his boot. Please, please, you should go. So, Krishna and Baldev became 
अस्वस्थ that they had a strong belief and they wanted to kill Karnsha. But what happened? Of Gop Gopi, Nanda Jasoda, Bandha. He also convinced Nanda Baba that your friend and the younger brother Basudev is in jail with Devaki. So Pridh help, send Krishna that he will kill Kansa with his all associates and take Devakya and Vasudev from jail. Also Ukrasena is also Jain who is your pure devotee. So please come to Mathura. Then hearing this, Jasoda took Krishna like baby and he concealed Krishna in his court, bed, under, under his bed, and covered with a cross that anyone should not see that Krishna, where is Krishna? Then Akru began to weep louder. And thus he promised that if Krishna will save them, and after that he can return back. So Nandvava was also convinced. And then he decided that with Krishna and Balde, with so many gops, his friends, Madhumangal, Subal and others, we should go to Mathura. And Krishna will very soon to uh, Kansa and we will all return back. But Yasoda was not going to take out Krishna from her bed, weeping. Then Nanda Bharat pacified her that I am doing oath, taking oath of Krishna because he is dear. That I am taking Krishna Baldev with me and no one is to check there, stop him. I will bring and give you in your hands again. I am promising. But they are not happy. He also promised, don't think that what Akru has told that uh, Vasudev and Deki are father and mother of Krishna. I don't believe. Any Prajvasi cannot believe this. So no question of that Vasudev and Deki will stop him. Because he is my friend, younger brother, I must help. So I want that. Oh, I am promising you that I am taking, as I am taking, I will return back with Krishna and Baldev and I will hand over to Krishna to you. Then Jasoda anyhow pacified all the gopis. He, she tried, but what became? She began to abuse Nanda and Jasoda. And they began to weep louder. Very, very pathetic scene came. So, here Akruj was weeping, and they wanted to go there. But when they saw that all gopis are weeping, and abasing Nanda and Jasoda that you are giving our dearest child, our beloved, in the mouth of a tiger, very ferocious tiger. Conscious philosophers, tiger. He may kill Nanda Jasoda. Nanda told, Have you seen this boy? How powerful he is. He has lifted in one his finger, Godad Govartha. He controlled Kali, take out and he sent him to Ramana. He went in the mouth of Python Abhasura and killed him and gave salvation. 
Brahma and all others, and also Varun, they pray to him. So he is not a so ordinary boy that comes will kill. So in a day or two, we are going there, and very soon he will kill Kansa with his all associates and brothers and demons, and we will return back. But she cannot control. But even when Akru began to weep, then Balde Prabhu and Nand Baba also they were, their heart was melted. And they agreed that Krishna should be brought to Mathura. Thus Akru brought his chariot nearer. And then Balde Prabhu was standing there waiting, and Akrur also. But when he saw that all the gopis are fed, and then Krishna melted, and again he went to in the kunj with all the gopis and tried to pacify them. Akrur saw that, oh, he is now engaged. What should I? He began to weep bitterly. <coughs> Taking the name of Vasudev and Devi, they are very soon, tomorrow they will be killed. Oh, Krishna, you should say. So again Krishna had a heart. Then Baldev Prabhu was waiting from him. So Baldev Prabhu and Akru and Nanda Baba also. So it will, it will be some delay. So this must go. And then Akru came and Krishna and Baldev were on the chariot. But gopis, now, up till now, they had some shame, shame? Shyness. From whom? The superiors, Nanda Baba and the others. Now they became, oh, shameless. They gave all their sameness and everything shyness. And they came to give up their life, oh, that Krishna is going to Mathura, and without him, how we can survive our life? So, weeping, they went on the field of the chariot to give up their life. Some took the rein of the horses. Some from, from behind and from some distance, they became faint. They could not come there, and thus pathetic scene was there. Then again he wanted to come down from the chariot, but Baldev Prabhu and uh, they catch hold their wrist, waist. Showing that, oh, he is going to be faint, Krishna, out of their love. I am saving him, but actually he, he was not saving, but he was holding, holding him that he should not come down. Now. Anyhow, then Nanda Baba and Baldev Prabhu, oh, they told to Akru that you should take the chariot very soon. And then all the gopis become faint. Mother Jasoda faint. And then Akul what did? Where they were sleeping on the way, and Akru took his chariot somewhat different, like this and this and that. Anyhow, he crossed them, and after that he took the chariot on the crosses. That no no sign of chariot going with him. And he chabuk lagaya with the horses and horses and as a air they began to run. And thickly they came out sight of all the movies. Now anyhow, the other gopis and gops, they also, uh, not gopis, gops, 
Nand Baba and his Yoshiyoshi Yoshi and Gop Balan. On the Bula cars they followed Krishna. They were the Bula cars, uh, the bulls are also were running, so running fast. So they followed Krishna and Baladev Prabhu. And what became of Braj? Even all the birds, all the animals, peacocks, they began to pause, always weeping. So you can imagine the stress of all the Prajabhasis, especially the Gopis. How? Manolagana. You can note and explain the meaning. मन रो लागे ना सखीरी मेरो शाम बिना मन रो लागे ऑल द गोपीज आर वेटिंग एंड टेलिंग ऑल आर वेटिंग एंड सिंगिंग लाइक दिस द सॉन्ग इज वेरी पैथेटिक हो मन रो लागे ना सखीरी मेरो शाम बिना मन रो लागे ना मन रो लगे ना सखीरी मेरो शाम बिना मन रो हो मन रो लगे ना सखीरी मेरो शाम बिना मन रो लगे ना हो मन रो लगे ना शाम बिना मन रो लगे ना शाम बिना रे धन श्याम बिना मन रो लगे ना हो मन रो लगे ना सखीरी मेरो शाम बिना मन रो लगे ना हो मन रो लगे ना सखीरी मेरो शाम बिना ब्रज की नगरी सुने सुने लागे सारी ब्रज की नगरी सुने सुने लागे सारी ब्रज की नगरी सुने सुने लागे सारी ब्रज की नगरी कुंज गली ने सुनी शाम बिना मन रो लगे ना कुंज गली ने सुनी शाम बिना मन रो लगे ना ओ मन रो लगे ना सखीरी मेरो शाम बिना मन रो लगे ना
से जाहुर जमुना पे बनिया भर ले जब जाहुर जमुना पे बनिया भर ले ओ पन घट सुनो लागे शाम की माँ मन रो लागे माँ पन घट सुनो लागे शाम की माँ मन रो of separation from Krishna. So, just now, Krishna Spur was singing this song. Manro lagi na saki, manro sham bina manro lagi. Gopis are weeping in separation from Krishna. Or oh, without sham, ghana sham, without the beautiful God Krishna, then, oh my heart can feel no joy, no happiness at all. Hmm? In fact, this whole, all the Braj Nagari, all the village of Vrindavan seems completely empty, completely desolate and meaningless now. All Kunjagali, all the Kunjas of Vrindavan, they appear like desolate wasteland. There's no happiness at all. Now Shama has gone. Shamasun has gone. Who? Who will make me hear the sweet sound of the fruit? Flute. Hmm? Krishna used to play so beautifully upon his flute. Who will make me hear this sound now? Who will make me dance with joy hmm? now that Shamsuna has left Vrindavan? Now, all coward boys, Suga, Sridham, Arjuna, Labanga, Stoka, Krishna, Madhumanga, everyone, all are weeping in separation from Krishna. Now, the cows, they're not grazing, grazing grass. And, oh, even the bumblebees, they don't take honey from the flowers anymore. They're also rolling on in the dust in separation. The cuckoos don't sing anymore. And the peacocks no longer dance. So all Vrindavan is 
seeking in separation. Hmm? Or now, what will we do when we go to the bank of Jamuna? Previously, gopis, they are saying, we used to take some clay pots upon our heads. And on the pretext of going to fetch water, we will go to Pan Ghat. And going there, when we come to collect water, Krishna would begin to play upon his flute. At that time, we would become Gyan Shunya, forget everything. And quickly, whether there's water in the pot or water not in the pot, gopis would quickly move in the direction and go for their secret meeting with Krishna. But now, oh, this place, Pan Ghat, completely empty, no Krishna. So in this way, all gopis and bridge they are immersed in the endless ocean of separation and everywhere becomes completely meaningless because the only meaning of their life is to serve Krishna and make Him happy. And in the absence of Krishna, they feel that their life has no meaning at all. So all birds without Krishna was sinking in the ocean of oh, separation. What became of Nanda who was with Krishna in Mathura, with all the gopis. Very soon Krishna killed and Baldev Prabhu and Krishna killed, comes and all his associates and get that kingdom to the father of Kansa. And then he is satisfied all. He brought all the Jarvas who have who have fled from the fear of Kansa to here and there. He brought them and gave our shelter to them. After that, Nanda Baba was waiting. That said, Krishna will come. Oh, after two days, anyhow, he has oh, bach kar ke nikale, <coughs> escaped from the control of Vasudeva, Devaki and other Jadavad. They began to tell that Krishna is the son of Vasudeva and Devaki. You are not the son of Nandasada, so you used to, if you will go, we will all die. Krishna became in Dalana. What to do? They are dying and also they will die. Oh, he called Nand Baba and told Baba, you should return back. Otherwise, I have promised <coughs> that I will come very soon. Otherwise, all Gopa and Gopis will die. So you should go and tell them that, oh, in a couple of days I will uh, solve all these things. Jagarsandh is also coming. I will have to save them. And after saving your friends very soon I will return back. So you should go. Then Maharaj told, no, don't do so. Don't. I will die. How I can return back to Brazil? I promise that I will bring Krishna and Baldev again and I will give in your hands to Yasoda. So if I will not fulfill, then what? How I can show my face to them? And also I will talk. All Prajapasi will die. Then he wanted to come with uh, Nanda Baba, but in the meantime, Oh, again Vasudeva and Deki began to weep louder. And all Jadvansi, they all came and began to weep. That we will die at once. Then Brajabhasi will die after some day after. But we will die today. Then he, he came to Nanda Baba Vasudeva and told Baba, you are my brother, elder brother, like a father. I will not keep Krishna here. I will give Upanayan, sacred head to Krishna and Baldev, and I will send very far away to read Vedas and all no kinds of knowledge and <coughs> arts, and after they will return back to me. So, as I am giving permission, you also give permission for their benefit. Nandvara could not spoke, speak. Anything, only weeping. Then anyhow Krishna pacified and grabs some ornament and some 
golden cloth that gave it to Mother and to all the Prajivas. Oh, he then had to take, but only that Krishna will be happy and very soon return back. So all were like this. When Nanda Baba returned with all the go older gopis, then all Prajivasi, especially gopis, Jasoda Mother, all running to see Krishna that Nanda Baba has returned and he has promised like so. So Krishna will surely come. But when they go, when they saw that Nanda Baba, or entering in his room, he covered his mouth and he can sent, lie down on the earth, rolling down. When anyone that did not dare to ask anything, but older gods told all the history, and then all became senseless. In the meantime, Krishna sent Uddha. Oh, after this, Uddha came. Krishna sent him to pacify his father and mother, especially his gopis, who, has, who are keeping their life that Krishna has promised that he will come in a couple of days after killing comes. So he must come because what he tells is true. His authority of truth. He must come. So they are keeping their life. If they will die, then Krishna will come and see that they have died. Then he will also be died. So, in this way, Krishna thought, oh, uh, Krishna now thinking, what to do me? What should I do? Anyhow, he was weeping. When he returned back from Gurukul, and Uddhav came and taking his hands told, my dear Uddhav, you are very qualified. Being my representative, you should go to Braja and pacify for my father, mother, and especially his gopis. Krishna knew that he cannot pacify. They are yet he sent. Why? Because Krishna is feeling separation for gopis, and gopis are feeling separation for Krishna each other. There are millions of gopis, each other dividing their separation mood and suffering. But in Mathura there was none to pacify Krishna and to know all these things, mysterious things. So Krishna cannot divide his or suffering to anyone. Krishna thought that he would go to my school, previous school, where principal is Radhika, my guru, and Vishakha, and Ladita and others are professors of the departments of so many. And there he will learn something about Dhai Yaksha Prem, one and two and a half letters of Prem. And then he will be qualified and then again he will return. And then I will tell my horse feelings. <coughs> And I will depart. I cannot go to Braja. Why? Oh, there is so mysterious thing. There is no time. Another friend we will again can come, then we will do. So in very short I am going to tell and I told. It is very, very long. Very, very long. So thou came in the evening. And he saw that Krishna has told him true. At the time of coming, I told Krishna, Krishna, I cannot go there. I, I cannot live there for a couple of days or in separation mode. Krishna told that, oh, Uddha, you should know that I am fully in Braja, partly in, very partly, but fully in. So Krishna with her, his yoga maya, he showed oh, how was the scenery of Braja when Krishna was there. 
सो नो फीलिंग सेपरेशन ही शॉ बाई दी हेल्प ऑफ योग माय फर्स्ट ही शॉ शॉ दैट ऑल गोपी एंड गो गोपी इन द मॉर्निंग स्टैंडिंग योग रिमेम्बर इन दी स्वीट पास्ट टाइम्स ऑफ कृष्ण गोविंद दामो गोविंद दामो Yoga, and he saw that all the dwarf balls are very happy, and they are waiting for Krishna to going for cow grazing. As if Vishnu was so much beautiful, like previous time when Krishna was there, Lakshmi was also decorating and serving in Vrindavan. They all saw the, all the scenery when Krishna was there, and became very, very happy. And we realize that Krishna is partly in Mathura, solely he is in. And then at once, Krishna took the power of the Yoga Maya, and again all gopis are he saw, oh, they are suffering so much, the separation, all are weeping. Shubal and Sridam are not going to cow grazing. They've been going, but cows are not taking even a grass. Cows not taking milk, and so whole the bridge was going to be treasured. Cow, oh, dying, and they will die. He saw. Then he came to Nanda Baba. When he heard that Uddhav has come. Anyhow, he came out of his home. Now, first day he has come out of his house because he was always weeping and concealing his mouth, face. He came. Oh, Uddha, very near, dear friend of Krishna. And then he, anyhow, pacified him and told anyone to bring some something to eat for Uddha. Because he was hungry, whole day fasting. So anyone went to a pranin, and he took a pass without sweet. But now anyhow, he took full stomach. And when he was satisfied, then Nand Baba began to ask, "What? How is my Krishna, my son?" But he could not talk. Oh, my brother Uddhav, uh, Basudev, he is okay. By luck, Kans is killed by his own activities. Now he has done. But Krishna, but Uddhav, I am remembering Krishna. How he is? Can you tell? And he became fine. He told that I am going to forget Krishna to Jamuna, but I see that oh his footprints everywhere. He used to play in the Jamuna with goats and gopis, with cows. Then again I used to go to Govardhan, but I see that Krishna in the groves of Govardhan everywhere. He was playing with gopis, oh Ra, Rash Lila and all Lila. So I began. I used to be very restless. Again here and there, and even here there, but restless. All are telling, remembering me the sweet past times, and began to be out. Uddhav looked. And he told that oh, he is very high class of being. I have not seen ever in my life. I have never heard about this. He told that they are very very fortunate. Even Krishna is supreme Lord, creator of the universe. 
and he has become he has become the son of Nand Baba and Jashoda. And they are thinking that uh, he is son, but really he is not son. So he told, what should I do? He is weeping. How should I pacify? Then he told, Nanda Baba, really you are very fortunate. Hearing this, their tears of in the eyes of Nanda Baba dried. And he began to tell, oh, Uddha, I thought that you are friend of Krishna and you are very intelligent, but I see that your teeth of milky teeth is still there. You have no intelligence at all. To whom what should be told? You don't know even. You are telling me very fortunate. And you are telling that, oh, Krishna is not an ordinary boy, he is not your son, but himself is Supreme Lord. But I am so unlucky, unfortunate. They have lost my son. Now I know, I have known to, from you that he is Supreme Lord. But he was not satisfied by my love. So he left me and he has gone to Devaki and Vasudev. Oh, in this world, only one was not father, Maharaj Dasa. When Ram left to burn forest, then he told Ram, Ram, and he left his place. I cannot, I cannot do it. I am more the Bajra, Thunderbolt. I am not dying. And telling so, he became friendly. Oh, so that, oh, what I have done wrong. But all Shastra tells me to, to tell so. So I told. He was repenting. That why I told. Jasoda waiting whole night. Nothing to tell. His boss was checked and she was like mad. Whole night evening. In the morning, Uddha went to take bath and to do his sandhya gayatri. And after that, nearby he saw, oh, in a kadamba konja, by Mariyashi. Kadamba konja. And then he entered and saw gopis. They have never returned back to their homes after Krishna left. They are in that forest, in kunja of, oh, kadamba. And uh, Radhika was about mad. Tiptoon Mahat was there, seeing a bee, bumblebee, and he was chastising. Oh, you should go away from here. Don't touch my face. And so many things. Now time is over. If time will be come, time will come, then tomorrow or day after tomorrow I will tell something. Tomorrow we are going to celebrate that to Yah of my Guru Day. And day after tomorrow, though it, it will be third day, but second day, I want to give my Pushpanjali in the lotus feet of Gaur Govinda Maharaj and especially to the Prabhupada Saraswati. His birthday is at that day. And tomorrow, birthday of my Guru Day. We will celebrate. You should come. I will come positively at 10 and we will glory time doing Aarti, Pushpanjali and then evening speaking about Sri. And third day we will speak about the glories of Srila Prabhupada and Gaur Govinda Maharaj. Gaur Pramana. Pramana, they should come very soon. Hare Krishna. So today Gurudev given so many initiation. So now Guru will announce your spiritual name. And tomorrow will be fire sacrifice, 7.30 a.m. And some more devotee has requested for initiation. 
So initially it took place, it will take place tomorrow, 6.30 a.m. So whoever desire for initiation and requested Gurudev for initiation, they must not delay after 6.30. They positively arrive there, 6.30 a.m. And I am requesting Sivadaranda Maharaj, he should must start first at 7.30 a.m. <laughs> Every day I come to Maya and she lovingly takes me into her arms and feeds me her milk. But now she won't even speak to me. I'll go to Baba. Oh Baba, I don't know why Maya won't take me into her lap and feed me her milk. Why? What is wrong? Why is everyone so busy? Oh, Baba, is it my birthday? No. Is it Delphi's birthday? No, my son. Then what are you doing? Why are you making all of these arrangements? We are making preparations to do a ceremony called Indra Puja. Who is Indra? Why are you doing this sacrifice? Oh, my son. Indra is the king of heaven. In our family line, we have do been doing this ceremony for Indra for a very long time. Indra is very powerful. It is by his mercy that we receive the rain. We are Rajabasis. And we maintain ourselves by the milk of the cows. The cows maintain themselves by the grass and the fields. And the grass and the fields, they maintain themselves by the rain. So, we must show gratitude and pacify King Indra. Being pleased by our yearly sacrifice, he sends abundant rainfall for farming and producing grains. If we want our life to be auspicious, we must worship Indra. Those who neglect to worship the demigods cannot receive any uh, relief from their problems. Oh my dear father, there is no need to worship Indra. It's a person's previous karma that determines what will happen to him, not the demigods. One may beg so much from the demigods that they cannot give any more or any less than what is destined by a person's actions. O oh, Father, you say that by doing a sacrifice to Indra, rain comes? But can you tell me, in the very desolate forest where nobody lives, does it rain there? In the ocean, which is full of water, does it rain there? Do the seas, mountains and forests worship Indra? Of course not, but they are still full of water. Oh Father, if you go to the middle of the desert and do a puja to Indra there, will it rain there? Rain is coming from the mode of passion and is falling on the land as well as the ocean. What has Indra got to do with it? We do not benefit in any way from Indra. I think we should worship Govardhan. He is Govardhan, who increases the wealth, health and happiness of Go, the cows, gopis, gopis and the senses. Govardhan is so kind to us. He gives us fresh grass and water for the cows. This grass is so sweet that the milk coming from the cows smells like lotus flowers. You've been doing puja to Indra for so many years. Have you ever seen him? No, I haven't seen him. But you can see Govardhan every day. Have you ever spoken with him? But Giraj always speaks with us. If you go to him and call, Hello! Then what will he say? Hello! And 
if you face the cow and you lose the cow and you say, Dovely, then Giri Raj will help you look for the cow by saying, Dovely, 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 Dovely. So Giri Raj is so kind to us. We can see him, he talks with us, and he maintains us. So you should use all the ingredients collected for Indra Puja and instead conduct a sacrifice to satisfy the local farmers and go the downhill. After hearing Krishna's speech, Nanda Maharaj and the leading men of Vrindavan discussed the proposal and accepted it. of foodstuffs, rice, dal, halibut, pakoras, pois, and all kinds of milk sweets, like sweet rice, sandesh, rasgulas, and madhu. Offer everything to Govardhan. Worship him with the proper articles. And you should invite the learned Brahmins to chant Vedic hymns and offer oblations into the fire. Decorate the cows and feed them well and then feed everyone else, including the dogs and chandalas. According to Sastric injunctions, you should sack him and the lake over there to conclude the worship. Nothing could be heard in Vrindavan except the auspicious vibration of instrumental music. The whole horizon was surcharged with auspicious sounds. The residents of Vrindavan felt blissful and all the living entities entered a jolly mood from the worship of Govardhan. The Brajavatis brought thousands of samosas, pakoras, colorful sabjis, and tons of milk, yogurt, and sweet rice, which filled lakes and kunds. Govardhan, he's giving you his darshan. Giriraj Govardhan ate all the offerings that were given to him with his huge mouth. Within minutes, he devoured all the thousands and thousands of sweets, savouries and mountains of rice. He drank the pums and lakes filled with milk and yogurt. We are poor Vajpasis. Whatever we have, we have given to you. Please take this tulsi leaf and be satisfied. Meanwhile, in the heavenly planets, Narada Muni came to meet with the king of the demigods, Lord Indra. All over the universe, everyone is honouring you. But down there, in Brajmandal, everyone is ignoring you. They are not giving you any respect at all. Oh, they are just villagers. If they do not do the right puja on the right day, it does not matter. Why are you saying this? Actually, they were going to use a myriad of preparations to worship and honour you. But instead, they took all the items for your worship and worshipped Kiriraj Govardhan. And it was all because of one small boy who was very talkative, Krishna. He said to them, There is no need to worship Indra. What is the use in worshipping him? He sends rain to the ocean where water is not needed. 
Indra can't do anything at all. Just see the impudence of these inhabitants of Vrindavan. The intelligence of those cowherd men is just like the cows they tend. They stopped my puja just by hearing a few words from a mere child. 